Okay, good morning. Uh, it's great to be back in, in person. Uh, if everyone would please stand for the pledge. <coughs> If we could uh, have a, a moment of silence for uh, Ukraine, that would be something that's appropriate. I see uh, many people have their uh, yellow and blue on today. Uh, our building will be decorated, I think, as of tonight, Mr. Jeffers? Courthouse. Courthouse. As of tonight, uh, like many buildings in, in the United States, I personally have a lot of friends, not a lot, but quite a few uh, in Ukraine, and I am uh, very saddened by this whole situation, as is all of America, and it's a serious concern for all of us. Um, so on that note, say a prayer. Let's hope it ends. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'll entertain a motion for the reading and approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Motion. Second. Okay. Another question? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opportunity for the public to address the board agenda items only. Good morning, Joan. Good morning. It's great to be back. Um, I have only one question. It's on the motion uh, to accept the proposal from Tyler uh, reassessment. Um, I only was able to uh, download the backup um, this morning, and the actual proposal is considerably long. I was trying to find out the cost estimate, and there's a billing page where, you know, project manager, on-site, off-site, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm looking for is, is there a ballpark figure for what the Tyler project will cost? Do we have that? Uh, we do. And it was a, a committee of, of many people that were involved in the uh, negotiations and the conversations and the uh, proposals. One of the problems Pennsylvania has, because it's not required by Pennsylvania law to reassess on a regular basis, is there's only two companies that are to do it in, in Pennsylvania. So uh, of the two companies, this is the one that they felt and, and we felt uh, uh, was the, the best possible provider of the service. Uh, I think it's, do you know what it is, Mr. Jeffers? It's 4.5. 4.5 million. Million, 4.5 million, okay. And, and how long would the project take? Did they have an estimate for that? Uh, probably about, 30, go ahead. 30, 36 months. Three years. Okay, so it's 4.5 million over that period. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Resolution 22007, uh, approving current payables. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby approved the following payables. Lackawanna County General Fund numbers 336918-337302 inclusive totaling $2,136,384.70. Electronic fund transfers, including all payroll accounts, totaling $2,836,407.50. Adopted the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, held on March 2nd, 2022, Mr. Chairman. Anyone have any questions on the uh, payables? Nope. No? Okay. Entertain a motion to approve? Motion. Second. <clears throat> on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, resolution 220066, entering a grant agreement with Neighborhood Works. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of the County of Lackawanna does hereby authorize a grant agreement between the Department of Economic Development of Lackawanna County and Neighbor Works of Northeastern Pennsylvania. 815 Smith Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, a Pennsylvania nonprofit community development organization. And be it resolved, the the county intends to undertake and carry out the first time home buyers program to assist median and lower income individuals and families in Lackawanna County in preserving and achieving home ownership by providing, providing down payment subsidies and closing out 
closing cost subsidies, utilizing $129,375 in funds made available by the Lackawanna County Affordable Housing Act 137 program funds. Be it further resolved, Neighbor Works of Northeastern Pennsylvania will undertake the administration of the time of the time home buyers program adopted at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on March 2nd, 2022. Mr. Chairman, here to speak upon that is our Director of Economic Development, Ms. Brenda Sacco. Good morning, Commissioners and everyone. This resolution is authorizing a second year grant agreement between the Department of Economic Development and Neighbor Works Northeast Pennsylvania to administer a first time home buyer program on behalf of Lackawanna County. The program will assist lower income individuals and families in Lackawanna County in obtaining home ownership by providing a grant up to $7,500 for down payment and closing cost assistance. These funds have been made available through our Lackawanna County, County Affordable Housing Act 137 program. For more information, individuals can reach out to NeighborWorks Northeastern Pennsylvania. Any questions? No, does no one have any questions? No. No, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. On the question, favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, resolution 220068. Entering into agreement with capital access, be it revolved, resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby award and enter into an agreement with Capital Access Incorporated for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program Management Services with a term to begin immediately and expire on June 30th, 2023, with an option to renew. Adopted at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, held on March 2nd, 2022. Mr. Chairman, here to speak upon that is our Director of Health and Human Services, Mr. William. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this uh, capital access was uh, awarded this grant uh, via the RFP process. They will assist us in uh, uh, processing and delivering funds uh, related to the Emergency Rental Assistance Program from the, the U.S. Treasury. We believe that their extensive experience in HUD grants, including uh, EREP, will allow us to serve more people and uh, serve more people uh, quickly than we're able to. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for nope. Mr. Browning? Nope. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Resolution 220071. Authorize the filing of an application for local shared account grants. Whereas Lackawanna County's interest in promoting economic development and revitalization within Lackawanna County, and whereas Lackawanna County is submitting grant applications to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development through the statewide local <coughs> share assessment account grant program as detailed, Lackawanna County Arts and Cultural $175,000 for the fabrication of 50 small and large size collapsible and portable vendor huts to be utilized for festivals and programs at Lackawanna County events. Whereas Lackawanna County hereby authorizes the chair and the chief of staff of Lackawanna County Board of Commissioners to sign and authorize all documents and accept any awards related to these statewide local shared assessment account grants. And now therefore be it resolved on this day, second day of March, 2022, that Lackawanna County Board of Commissioners does hereby authorize the submission of this application to the statewide local share assessment account grant program on behalf of the above named projects. Adopted a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on March 2nd, 2022. Uh, Mr. Chairman, here to speak upon that is our Director of Arts and Cultural, Ms. Mari McGuigan. Morning, Commissioners Morning. and everyone. Morning. Nice to be back. Uh, so this, we've had a lot of county events such as festivals where we rent tents and we have vendors selling and we started thinking over the years that a more flexible, cost-effective, and a sustainable idea might be to build and own our own, that we could also rent to other, um, lend, sorry, not rent, to other communities for events. So last year, we built a prototype of this. Uh, it's like a little house. And we were trying to find maybe some outside funding. So this is, we're applying to the LSA statewide grant uh, to see if we can get some money to fabricate them. OK. Good program. Um, anyone have any questions for Maureen? No, good luck. Yeah, good luck is right. <laughs> Got to play to win. <laughs> anyway, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, resolution 220072. Entering into an MOA 
with the AFL-CIO. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby enter into a memorandum of agreement with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees District Council, AFL-CIO, Office of Youth and Family Services for the period of January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, adopted at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, held on March 2nd, 2022. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a one-year extension on a current contract that has expired with CYS basically, um, being that we are do, do not have an HR director at this moment in time, nor do we have a CFO. We felt as though, as though negotiating a one-year extension will allow us the time to hire those individuals that can go forth and hire and, and negotiate a full uh, four-year contract with uh, the CYS. Um, Two percent was already budgeted for this. It's a one percent raise on top of that, which is really a 20, is part of a 20 percent commitment from the county. The other 80 percent of this is paid by the state. And, and you do have a memorandum, a memorandum of understanding. Yes, the union has uh, agreed to this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone have any questions? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Any question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Resolution 220073. Extending the county current county audit services. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby extend the current agreement for county audit services with Zelenkowski Axelrod LLC for the years ending December 31st, 2022 and 2023, and to cost $149,500 per year. Adopted the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, held on March 2nd, 2022. Mr. Chairman, here to speak upon that is our Chief Solicitor, Mr. Frank Rosario. Good morning, Commissioners, uh, as well. Very happy to be back. Um, this is a resolution which will extend um, the county auditing services for the years 2022 and 2023 with uh, Zelkowski Axelrod. They are our present auditors. Uh, they did the audit for 20 and 21. We changed those auditors when the administration came in. Um, with the retirement of our CFO and the process that we will be undertaking and looking for a new CFO, we thought it prudent at this time to lock in these auditing services for the next two years. Uh, there's no increase in the cost from the current price or auditing price uh, uh, that was proposed, uh, and it's prudent to do so. This is a significant undertaking, so when the new CFO comes in, Either he or she will be able to hit the ground running because the auditing firm will already be appointed and already uh, begun their um, uh, practices of, of preparing the audit for 2022. Anyone have any questions? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Any question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, 220062, appointment to the Workforce Development Board. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby reappoint the following individual to the Lackawanna County Workforce Development Board with a term to commence on February 1st, 2022 and continue through January 31st, 2025. Mr. Keith Baker, Assistant Regional Director of the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry Bureau of Partnership and Operations, sitting as a mandated state employee service representative. Adopted at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, held on March 2nd, 2022, Mr. Chairman. Okay, this is a required uh, appointment by the uh, state. Does anyone have any questions on this? No. Nope. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. And the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris? Yep. Okay. yep. Resolution 220064. Appointment to the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Railroad Authority. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby reappoint. The following individual to the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Rail Authority, Mr. Jim McLaughlin, 119 Oak Hill Road, Archbold, term to begin immediately and expire on December 31st, 2026. Adopted at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, held on March 2nd, 2022, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anyone have any questions on this? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. 220067. Appointment to the Lackawanna County Housing Authority, be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby reappoint the following individual to the Lackawanna County Housing Authority. Mark Wallace, 255 Dundas Street, Carbondale, PA. Term effective immediately and to expire December 31st, 2026. Adopted a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held on March 2nd, 2022, Mr. Chairman. 
Again, it's another reappointment. Uh, anyone have any questions? Nope. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. No question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion 220069. A motion to accept, I propose a motion to accept the proposal submitted and awarded to the Real Property Assessment Project to Tyler Technologies Inc. Pending solicitor review and negotiation of an agreement. Um, so at the last meeting, um, I I wanted to table it uh, due to the fact that I wanted to ensure that there are guarantees in place. Sorry, <laughs> that there are guarantees in place for um, not just the elder or elderly citizens, but people who are living on paycheck to paycheck. Um, I've spoken to Tracy Hart, who is our Deputy Chief of Staff and was on the committee for the RFP, um, and we discussed that exact issue. Um, I do have um, an appointment being scheduled, a meeting being scheduled with uh, Joe Joyce, Barb Linity, Bridget Carey, and others to further discuss it. There are, uh, There is one particular uh, ordinance that was passed in 2016 regarding giving tax deferment to elderly, the elderly. Um, it seemed applicable only to the elderly, and I, th I think it's a little too subjective. I think it needs to be more, the eligibility retirements requirements need to be more non-discretionary and more specific. Um, so step one was when we passed the motion for, uh, to issue the RFP. This is step two. Um, I feel comfortable in speaking. Joe Joyce also provided me with other documentation. Um, so pending my meeting with uh, the individuals I just stated, as well as the additional information I have, um, I am confident by the time we get to step three, which will be uh, the final step in moving forward with reassessment, which will be uh, approving the contract once the lawyers um, go back and forth, which we know can take some time. Um, Having said all that, I am in a comfortable position to second uh, this motion to move forward with the contract negotiations with Tyler Technology. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Motion is approved. Or uh, second, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. All right. Wait, you motioned I second. I, I, right, she seconded. I'll, I'll vote on this. I on the question. On the question. I'm good. Yeah, yay. I'm an A. No. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. All right. That took longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, opportunity for the public to address the board. And Joan, just to answer your question, I misspoke before the Tyler. Mm -hmm. Their proposal was 4.9. Well, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I've heard a nasty rumor that Tom Durkin is going to retire. Are you people crazy? Do you think you're going to find someone to fill his shoes? I asked him if there was anything we could do to keep him to make him stay, and he didn't even let me finish my sentence and said no. Well, you're never going to find someone better than him, and you'll be darn lucky to find someone nearly as good as him. Agreed. He and Mr. We, we agree with we you. We agree. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, for the better part of two years, you've been on Zoom or you've been elsewhere in the county for your meetings. So <laughs> it's been a while since I've been roaming the halls of this building. And the first thing I noticed when I walked in is there's new flooring. Now, how, how, how long has this building been open? Four or five years? What was it, January 2017 it opened? Somewhere around there. Yeah, okay. Well... I was here when it opened, and I got to tell you, that original flooring was crappy. I mean, it was sticking up, and people were <laughs> tripping and everything else. But I'm curious, what did it cost to do this a second time with new flooring? Uh, John, I think our solicitor can, can uh, talk about this since he's the one that was really the, 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 the head behind this of getting this cleaned up and fixed. Um, I don't think it's cost us anything, right? Oh, great. How'd you swing that? Well, so what we did, Joan. <laughs> we have good lawyers. <laughs> sure. Uh, thank you. So what we did, Joan, is there's a certain amount of money which we held back from the initial installation for installation. So it became evidently clear before they had finished the flooring 
um, that there were issues with the flooring. Uh, and, and then shortly thereafter, once we came into the building, and, and I think it was in 2019 when they actually began occupying the building. So there's somewhere around $300,000 that's held back, which was earmarked for floor installation. So what we did is we decided initially that we were certainly not going to tender that approximate $300,000 for the floor until the floor was correctly installed. We then put both the contractor and subcontractors, bond companies on notice with regards to um, the uh, uh, lack of diligence with regards to the installation of the floor. And then that began the discussion between the county and the um, contractor and the subcontractor. And through those discussions, we were able to um, negotiate the fact that they would come back in, they would redo the entire floor. We had Mark Dewar, uh, who's our uh, director of, of maintenance, involved intricately from the beginning to ensure that it was the right product. And we did it floor by floor to ensure that as it was laid down, that it was properly adhering to the subfloor. And that seems to have been the case. Everyone uh, is comfortable with it, particularly Mr. Dewar, and that's how we've been able to get it done. Well, it looks a whole lot better, well, thank I'll you. tell you. Yeah, it does. And, and, and what we'll do, Joan, is we'll wait a little bit once it's all put in, make sure, obviously, that it's, it's, it's laying the way it's supposed to, and then once that occurs, then we can, you know, talk about the tendering of the remaining funds, um, and then I presume there'll be some discussions between the contractor and subcontractor relative to what occurred, but we'll be out of it by then. Great. I'm, I'm glad you got that fixed. Thank you. Speaking of getting things fixed, are all the elevators up and running? They are not. Uh, there is one on, right outside the door here that is still not up and running, but uh, Mark is Mark Dewar is taking care of that. The, the process with elevators is bizarre to me because you can only get parts from certain parts of the country and, and, and sometimes out of the country. Part of the problem has been for Mark to get that one operating is um, the lack of parts that have been, been, been made over the pandemic because of, of people who have lost their jobs and so on and so forth. So the infrastructure part of, of the country is still, uh, we're still waiting for parts, to be quite honest with you. Once he does that, though, he's going to get it. Okay, that's good. And that's all I have. It's great to be back. Yep. This building has been an adventure, Joan. <laughs> On top of all that. Okay. Anybody else? Please. I'm Chris Kelly. I'm with the Times Tribune, and I'm here to uh, speak to Commissioner Dominic about the continuing situation between her and uh, Mayor Betty over at the prison. Warden Betty. I, I, Warden Betty. I'm sorry. Did I say Mayor Betty? <laughs> I did. I'm not used to this. This is weird. I'd also like to second Joni on the floors in the elevator. She could not be more right, as usual. Anyway, uh, Commissioner Dominic, I've tried to talk to you this, about this privately, but you refused to discuss it. And I just want to, you know, give you an opportunity to do that now or get you on the record. You say you don't remember who gave you the key. Chris, it's not that I, first of all, I did speak to Boris about this, I think, twice or maybe one, twice, and then I also spoke to Jeff Horvath. Mm. I, as you pointed out, my Facebook post, it was meant to basically address your article and to just, I know that what I say to someone at the newspaper does not necessarily, it's not necessarily always conveyed as stated. So it was simple. I'm not simple. sure I understand what you're saying. All right, again, I, I, you know, let's let's keep this on track. It's this isn't a debate. Yes, let's, it's not. Basically, what I want to say is that I didn't feel comfortable speaking to you in light of the tone of your article, where you talked about juicy gossip, and that I was quietly given the key, which was, I don't know where you would get that quietly given the key, and it seemed like something insidious had occurred. Frank, your word. Um, so I, I, I've stated everything I can say on it. Um, the issue is moot at this point. Uh, I don't have a key. Um, and uh, I, I just want to move forward, and I have other projects I'd like to work on, and I think if I repeated my answers to any of your questions, it would be just basically that, a repeat. Well, I mean, yeah, fair enough, but you haven't answered any of my questions. Again, this isn't a debate. Do you have any other things you want to talk about, Mr. Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner's other business. 
Mr. Sharmack, you want to talk about Ukraine? I do. Um, so with everything that's going on over in the Ukraine, one of our deputy sheriffs, Matt uh, Batico, is, and his wife, Olana, um, they're, they're members of the St. Vladimir's Ukrainian Church, and it's over on 7th Ave, just, just over a couple blocks, um, looking for medical supplies, bandages, um, I, I mean, whatever you consider medical supplies, eye drops, aspirin, Tylenol, you know, things of that nature. So they have a shipment that's going to be going um, out of Philadelphia Saturday. So they're gathering up all these supplies. So if anybody has anything or would like to drop anything off at the church or even here, our sheriffs will get it over there. Or we'll get it over there. Um, they're collecting until Friday, I think, 9 a.m. So hopefully we can get them some more supplies and get over to those folks. Uh, it's desperate times there. So that's what I have for that. We, we were emailed a list of the supplies that they're asking for. Do we have a list? We, we, we were. And, and, and just to touch on that, they're also taking monetary donations. And, and money as well. To, to, yep. For the fuel and for the trucks that they have to get this down to the Philadelphia airport to get it onto the plane. The plane will be landing in Poland. So this is going to be going to the border where the refugees are too. So, I mean, there's... There's other needs that, that are out there that what, what, what's uh, the commissioner's talking about is listed in the uh, the email, but you know sleeping bags, diapers, things like that. If they can and monetary donations would monetary be in the form donations. of cash and given to. Well, I think they there's, they have a fund set up over at the church, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Well, on this email, I don't have that information, okay. but I'm pretty sure that they. This do. was I'll, the medical I'll talk supply. To, uh, the deputy sheriff and find out exactly what's in. See if we can do it online or. Yeah, we could do that. I mean, it, the, the problem is, is the plane is leaving Saturday. So right. I mean, today is Wednesday. Right. Uh, we wanted to get this word out during this meeting because obviously it's being broadcast live and then it will be reported upon, I'm sure, by, by the Scranton Times and those. Um, and it already has been actually twice. So right. it's kind of important. Obviously, it's a humanitarian effort for all those who are kind of stuck at the border there and uh, trying to cross over. It's, it's, it's actually a very large humanitarian problem at this point. Yep. Yep. And I'd like to make just one other comment, too, from the earlier. Um, the reassessment. So, you know, my concern, and, and this is this is strictly what I'm, I, I know it's been 50 years. And just one example, um, you know, I was up at a borough meeting in Archibald, and one of the concerns was that, you know, there's a lot of elderly, the lot, oh, you get in the hills of Archibald, there's a lot of people that have been in their house for 50 plus years. They're elderly, they're on fixed incomes, I mean, I mean, some of these people survive on maybe even eleven, twelve thousand dollars a year. I, I don't know how some of them do it, but they do. And those are the people that I'm concerned with. So, you know, my reason for a no vote is strictly. I know it's been 50 years, but my reason is I have to think about the folks that are going to get hit the hardest, and they're the ones. And I know our our rule of thumb is a third, a third, a third. Um, I don't know if that's going to be. True, I don't know if it's going to be accurate, but until we have, you know, my mind, I thought until we have a plan on, you know, how are we going to help these folks? How are we going to protect them? What are we going to do if they are in the situation where they have to, they could lose their home or they're going to lose their home? How are we going to help them? And then also, you know, what's our plan moving forward? Is it going to be another 50 years for another reassessment? So, you know, that's what I'm concerned about is just a plan moving forward. Um, so we'll see how this transpires. And, and I, I'm sure that we can get programs in place to help these folks, and we're going to have to because it's going to be a it's going to be a serious issue. So that that's my reason. So thank you, Commissioner Dominic. Um, so today um, is well March is Women's History Month. Um, it the U.S. has celebrated Women's History Month every March since 1980 since the 1980s. And I, like I normally do, Google to find out as much information as to where it originated and all that good stuff. And I found an article that was published yesterday, uh, March 1st, by Aaron Blakemore of the National Geographic. And I just would like to read a couple excerpts from her, her article just to give everybody, I think it's important, and just to give everybody an idea as to where this came from. Uh, she started the article by saying that women have always been a part of history, but for centuries their participation in it was overlooked. 
Early history texts often excluded women altogether, aside from accounts of powerful women like queens. Historians, who were almost entirely men, often saw the past through the lens of the great man theory, which holds that history is largely shaped by male heroes and their struggles. That change in the 20th century with the birth of women's history as an academic discipline, which was a push to recognize the achievements of women, and a movement to ensure that women had equal access to the academic institutions where their history may be taught. In the US, the result was the National Women's History Month, an annual celebration born from the activism of historians intent on making women, um, intent to making sure that women uh, got their due. And like I said, it started in the 1980s. Um, and, you know, it, it was noted in here how women were perceived by trying to start the initiative and, 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 and move, a, I guess, a feminist movement when it, when it began that they were labeled as man haters, which is not what they were at all. It was just they were saying, we don't want more than them, we just want the same. And, uh, what had happened is that, I guess the way it started uh, is back in, let's see here, 1981, a Democratic representative of Maryland and then a Republican senator of Utah sponsored a bipartisan bill to declare the week of March 8th National Women's History Week. And then the week-long celebration took place annually until 1987 when Congress followed the lead of several U.S. states and passed a joint resolution declaring the entire month of March Women's History Month. And she noted that in the years since, the push to recognize and include women in the study of history has continued, and that in 1999, uh, a National Women's History Commission uh, was created by President Bill Clinton and recommended initiatives to find hidden women in museums and archives to establish statewide women's ini history initiatives and incorporate women's history more extensively uh, in ed the educational uh, curriculum. Um, she basically says that we have come very far, um, but we still have, you know, places to go. So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge all women from uh, single moms to stay-at-home moms, which I believe is probably the hardest job there is, um, and to recognize the growing number of women in leadership positions over the past few years, including uh, my friend Bridget Kozarowski, who is a state representative, um, Attorney Mary Walsh Dempsey, who is now Judge Dempsey. She was appointed to the bench recently. Is she going by Judge Dempsey or Judge Walsh Dempsey? Uh, Mary Walsh Dempsey. So it would be Judge Walsh Dempsey. Um, uh, Mayor Cognetti, uh, um, who else? I'm, I'm like really going off the cuff here. Um, oh, and our president judge, Trish Corbett. Um, there are just a few off the top of my head of women in leadership positions. And uh, like I said, regardless of, of what... Uh, women um, do for a living or what their occupation is, um, we all deserve to be uh, looked at and treated equally as men um, and to have a seat at the table. And I do believe that we are headed in that direction and light years away from where we were. Um, but I guess the, 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 the figurative fight, uh, metaphorical fight continues. Um, but I just want to say to all women, especially women in these leadership positions, um, it's a hard job. And I just want to uh, take an opportunity to thank them and to honor them and just tell women to support women. Thank you. And uh, the only thing I want to talk about is uh, Chris's comments on the reassessment. Uh, there are some state programs. My mic is on. It's me. My, uh, there are some state programs that were, where there are protections uh, for people uh, that are in place currently. Uh, I, I don't discount the uh, concern. I, I agree with that. Uh, however, uh, it's over 50 years. It's not 50. It's more than 50. There are many properties in Lackawanna County that have are not assessed at all, uh, I really don't believe that anyone's property taxes are going to go up, or very few. You can't do this for over 50 years and not, uh, not address it and ignore it. And the other part of it is we're going to be mandated by the court, we're going to be ordered to do this. 
So do we need the court to tell us what we're supposed to do, or should we do our job? It's relatively simple to me. It's what's right, it's what's necessary. You can't wait 54 years, I think it is. 54? 1968. Yeah, 1968. And you know, and, and we're one of the last counties in the, in the, in the Commonwealth. And there are, there are this, is, this is something that needs to be done. It's in everyone's best interest. People are afraid, I understand that. But there is help, and there'll be more help. We'll do everything we can do to ensure people don't have issues with their homes. Uh, the program, one of the programs is that you, you can't take their homes, and they can stay there for the rest of their lives. Uh, there, there are many programs involved, and and again, this is this is something. It's, it's coming whether we vote for it or we don't. We're got, but we're going to, and we just did, and we're going to continue. On that note, I'll entertain a motion Wait, too. Can I say one thing? I just want to say one one thing. I, I share in Chris's concerns. I and, do too. Um, I do think that hopefully we will have something nailed down with regard to the specifics, with regard to any tax exemptions yeah. or deferments, and I think that that may hopefully relieve some of the unsettled, yes. uh, uncomfortable feelings of our vo most vulnerable citizens. If they're able to look and say, okay, this is going to be something I can apply for. I, I, I will be eligible or will not be eligible for this. Um, and like I said, there are there, there, there is something in existence that I, I think we can work off. Tracy Hart has found something mm -hmm. from uh, Lincoln Township in North, North Carolina. Was that where it was? Yeah. It was called the, what was it called? It was a string, the circuit breaker deferment, which is, it, I don't understand the name, but um, it, it, it's kind of similar to what we will probably need in this county. Um, and Chris is welcome to join in on our uh, conversation about that. Um, so having said that, um, hopefully by the time we do approve it, we will have something more concrete for the people who are concerned I agree. about that. I agree. Mr. Jeffers? Okay. Uh, I think one important point to, to, to bring out is, um, you know, when, when any property owner appeals their assessments, they can appeal it really on one of two grounds, or they have one or two means by which they can challenge the assessment. One is what they call fair market value, which is where you'd go out and you'd get an appraisal and the, and the, and the, and, and, and the fair market value would be determined by an appraiser. The second is what we call a uniformity argument. There's a uniformity clause contained within the Pennsylvania Constitution which allows property owners to come in, and if they don't want to spend the cost to get an appraisal, they can argue that my home, my property, which is comparable to these three or four other properties in our area, is not in uniform, or it's not uh, uniform with those other assessed properties. The problem is, we don't have the ability, and property owners don't have the ability anymore to use that argument because the assessment having been 54 years ago, their properties are no longer uniform. So in essence, by allowing for the reassessment, not only are we getting properly assessed values, you're also allowing property owners that second defense, which they currently do not have if they choose to challenge their assessment. I think that's an important point that I know goes down the rabbit hole a little bit, and maybe most folks who don't uh, appeal their assessments or, or deal with those issues may not, you know, uh, 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 not that they don't understand, they may not be familiar with, but that's in a very important point, and it's, hand, it's tying the hands of not only our assessor's office because we're getting we're getting hurt on these assessments, but it's also tying the hands of the Court of Common Pleas because our judges are without the ability to allow individuals to present that defense, and that's problematic. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jeffers? Mr. Chairman, just two things. Uh, f first of all, I want to uh, talk about the clinic that was held next door and how it ended on Monday, uh, the 28th, when the, uh, first of all, the commissioners, thank you for putting through the emergency order uh, so that we were able to do these things. It should be noted that while it was very highly successful and there were zero complaints, which I liked uh, the most uh, for anything else over there, uh, there are people that need to, uh, interim health care, the nurses that took care of everybody over there, Dr. Pat Cannaboy, who 
got us uh, uh, the uh, the testing. Uh, the sheriff's department, John Basaglio, gave us the building. Obviously, we rented it, but you know, without that, um, we would not be able. To. So it takes it takes a lot of people to put these things together. Obviously, uh, the person who did all of this was Jason Kavulich, and and he should be recognized also. But it was a very highly successful clinic. It, it saved, uh, I believe, to save a lot of people a lot of anguish and time, uh, not putting on the feds or the state, but if you rely upon, you wait and wait and wait for these stuff to come through, you can be waiting for months. And I think everybody is aware of that, especially over the last two years. Uh, hopefully, and I really mean this, that this is the last one that we have to go through as far as surges go. Our uh, ratio is down to 7.79% is positivity rate as of today. So with that being said, uh, the other thing I want to to hit on is what, what Jones talked about, about Tom Durkin retiring. He did. He retired on Monday. 28th. Uh, I know. I understand it. Uh, it's. Uh, it, he's not alone, though. I mean, it, he, while Tom retired, uh, he was here since the early 2000s, which makes it uh, all more important to, to bring someone in um, that has some type of knowledge of, of government and, and financial work. Uh, Tom will be sorely missed, especially by me, to be quite honest with you, because when I have a question, he answers it in two seconds. Um, the other history one, book. what's that? He's and, like a history, and a history book. book. And, 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 he can tell you things going back to. You know, he's not, and he, and he, he has been point blank. Call me if you need to need to ask me a question, and that's that's very good. Um, he's not alone though. John Foley is also retiring from the assessor's office, the, the, the director of assessment. Um, he's another uh, you know wealth of knowledge as far as uh, everything that's gone on in this, in this county as we're talking about reassessment and we're trying to reorganize that department as we speak by making new positions and stuff like that. It, it should be noted, uh, this is a little unknown fact, that John, uh, Mr. Foley, worked on the last reassessment in 1968 <laughs> when he was in his 20s. So uh, it's- How long has John been here? Since when? I don't know. I, I mean, as, as chief assessor, I think he's been here since the- uh, He's been here a while. 2016, 2014, somewhere in that range. Uh, but he's been with the reassessment assessment office since 1994, 95. Uh, but as he tells me, uh, he actually worked on the, f the last reassessment in 1968 as a young man. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can imagine that the wealth of knowledge that he has, and, and that we, we believe, you know, it would be remiss if we did not ask him for his advice or even bring him back as a consultant or something along those lines in the, in the future. So with that being said, I, I just wanted the public to know that we lo we've lost two uh, very, very important uh, cogs in the, in, the, in the county government's machine. Um, and I'll be ringing their phone off the hook over the next couple of weeks to months. So that's all I have, sir. I think it's uh, important to know that we still have access to both of them. Uh, you know, I, I was able to uh, convince Mr. Durkin to stay an extra year or two. Uh, and uh, Mr. Foley would not probably leave until we got the reassessment started. Uh, he was very, very much in favor of this. He thinks it's very important. And uh, he's, but he'll, he'll still be around. And as Mr. Jeffers said, we'll probably end up hiring him as a consultant. Okay. And we did advertise both positions, right? We have not advertised the position yet. We but, are going to. But we're going to. We are going to. All right, on that note, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. Motion. Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.